This is like my fourth time now starting the video because I find myself rabbiting on and going down too long a haul. So I'm gonna quickly explain how to create your own reality and the science behind it and the evidence behind it and try and get people to understand exactly how how we do it. Um, you know, try, try and explain it in the best way that I can. Let's put it that way. Now, there's a break off in the scientific community at the moment and it's splitting, it's literally splitting. The reason being is that there, there's a lot of um, science, you know, if you're a material reductionist, then you won't accept anything, anything else outside of what you can actually measure and switch. You know, what they, they think your body's just a, a load of switches and it just, um, you know, does what it got to do and you get the illusion of reality and everything else. Um, but in actual fact, in actual fact, it's a lot deeper than that. And the, the break-off community in the science community, um, and these are, these are not silly people. These are, um, whilst I don't see them as being any kind of, having any more knowledge about this sort of stuff than me, they certainly can break it down and give you a bit more of an explanation scientifically what's going on. And it can also do the tests, which prove millions, sometimes billions to one. Um, you know, the odds of it being anything else but like billions to one. Well, that in a court of law, that would be taken as proof and that would be it. But uh, for some reason, the, 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 the um, shall I say, the, the, the material reductionist community just want it to be measured and that's it, even though it can't be measured because we don't have the tools to measure it at the moment. We will do, but we don't at the moment. So, creating your own reality. I've gone to a lot of talks from a lot of very high up people. Um, we're talking PhDs, we're talking world top, the world's top physicists, I I've, I've spoke to all these. I, I've I've been to, for instance, last year I went to Regents University in London, and basically where where the break off community has gone, it was a it was actually a, a conference on a consciousness and where we are exactly with science at the moment, and um, and it took my, it took me a long time to get my head around all what was explained there because um, you know there was a lot of people there. It was a long weekend and it's very very difficult to take in everything because there's so much information. Um, actually, um, Dean, Dean Radin, um, I think that's how you pronounce his second name. He's, um, he's a PhD scientist and um, he's actually wrote a book at the moment which is um, called Real Magic. It hasn't been out long, only a couple of weeks, so check that out because that's really good. But I went to see him um, in Regents University last year. Um, stuff he shared was fantastic along many other people people who have had near-death experiences and people who study the people who had near-death experiences it was just endless um Stuart, professor Stuart hammeroff um who's the anesthetist um who operates on brains in in arizona um yeah and and basically let's explain where the breakaway scientific community are at this moment so, and, and this is evidence-based, and also there's what you would class as being proof because it's the tests that have been done have proved conclusive, like could it billions to one, it couldn't be. So, you know, it's basically, it is. And where we are is when you have a feeling, that feeling that you feel can be two things. It's going along and it can be two things, but so basically every time you make a choice, every time you have a feeling, every, every time anything happens, and this is talking to happen in every minute, you get a breakaway of two cells, and that both didn't happen, and it did happen. Now, which, whichever one of those two, you want to call it realities, um, whatever you want to call it, whichever one of these win, is decided by you and how much energy you put into it because the bigger the mass so this is professor Stuart Hammeroff now I'm speaking about so wherever the mass energy goes and the attention goes and the feelings very important that's, that's through the feelings 
like our sixth sense you know you've got your five senses but there's a there's something else a bit bigger where, where we download you know we are everything so basically we have to everything has to be available to us in our minds if we tune into it in the right frequency you know something like that so um yeah it splits off and and the one with the, the greatest mass around it is the one that survives so the other one the one that just don't get thought about or don't don't get any feelings put into it it just dies off eventually it, it dies off it, it could be we don't we don't know exactly what time it would be it would depend on them you know the actual thoughts and everything else so every time you're making a decision and you're feeling it you're charging it so you have to be very careful with what decisions you're making you have to almost detach from your five senses sometimes if you're not getting what you want because if you if you pay attention to those things that you you're, you're getting then then they're gonna you're gonna give them you're gonna charge them let's put it like that it's a good word because everybody is energy this, energy that. It's become a bit of a cliche now, but um, yeah, you're going to charge them. So, so sticking with Professor Hammeroff at the moment, he's um, so he's discovered that we have these things in our brain called microtubules. Uh, very tiny, very complicated. I can't really explain them. You'd have to go and look, look it up online or some of his talks on YouTube, which are fantastic. I think there's one hour and seven minutes long. And I can't remember what it's called, but put in consciousness and you'll see it. And exactly an hour and seven minutes, 26 seconds, I think it's off the top of my head. So, yeah, so um, basically what happens is um, your microtubules are the, the transit vehicle to consciousness outside of your brain and the reason why he discovered that is because when he knocks people out he spent his whole life wondering where they go so he uses these these anesthetics and 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 takes away people's consciousness now obviously whatever their consciousness was in is now gone so therefore that's where the consciousness that's where the bed of human consciousness is and he managed to pin the point it down and pinpoint it down to these microtubules which are affected in by these certain chemicals that they've stumbled on by accident basically and um, it works with most people and some people works longer and shorter you know um so yeah so so he took it to there and also then he's gone on from that and i remember that he's not he's not a scientist he's not paid he's not funded by anybody he's just fascinated so he's, he's always done brain operations and everything else and, and he's just fascinated by the actual term consciousness where is it, what's happening and he's got all the laboratory equipment around him and he can do whatever he wills with it so he's not bought, let's say his funding doesn't depend on the results of the exams as many of it does in, in, in the mainstream science um, and, and you know his results are not decided by anybody else with a lot of money basically and, and certain ones ignored because we have had discoveries made that have been shelved because they don't suit agendas so there's where we are with that so we've got the transit vehicle we know that consciousness is everything because we are everything because we're not really this body this body is a big collection of cells but no different than the tree there's no difference between me and what I'm made of and that tree it's the same stuff. You can go and buy it in a hardware store. You know, a bit of carbon, a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of water. You know, you can go and buy all this stuff, mix it together. You're not going to get me, and you're not going to get that tree. It's the consciousness that builds the actual physical thing. It's 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 nature. It's it's that bigger ether. It's what we connect into. It's the knowledge. It just knows where to go. Things know how to connect together and know what they want. So so that's that explained. Um, trying to keep it as scientific as I can. Now, what we find is that the destructive parts of creating your own reality are when you get any doubt, particularly anxiety. Anxiety is the worst. And to a certain degree, the things you get anxiety about are created over the top of what you're trying to create. So if you're trying to create something and then you get anxiety about it and you start to focus on it, so you're going right into your left brain now and you're pinpointing yourself down to a tiny little fraction because you're starting to focus and really worry and, and everything else. The more you attach to that, that side of it, the less likely you are to get it. What you've got to do is try and 
open your mind out. So get, get yourself into the right brain and the left brain and think about things logically and get yourself to a point where there's a gut feeling, there's almost a knowing inside of you that nothing else could possibly be your reality but what you're creating. And that's the hard part. Because how can you create something that you don't feel that you deserve, that you, you get anxiety about, so you're, you're basically, you're charging up its opposite. Um, that other people tell you that you're not going to get. And on top of this, what other people think you're not going to get. So you need to be very, very careful. If you really want to create powerful in this reality, you need to completely detach from everybody and everything. You know, there's a reason why when people get depressed that they, they feel like locking themselves away in, in, a, in a room, in, in a dark room, and just... That's just meditation. Basically, that's where you're going. And, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's not good. Isolation, we, the more aware you get, the more you want to isolate yourself because it's easier to create your own reality when you're, is, when you're in isolation. So, um, what, what, what you've got to do is try to think about what you want, feel what you want, but you don't feel it as in, I really want this, I really want that, because what are you doing? You're just asking for want, want, want. Want doesn't mean that you have it. You need to go there and try to, and this is where it gets difficult for people who are struggling, who've never had anything. Imagine what it would be like to already have that, to already own it, to already uh, be there, whatever it may be, whether it's whether it be a lovely place that you want to live in in a country or uh, whether it be somewhere like here that you want to be. And, and, you know, you need to go there in your mind and create that place and have no doubts that is true and think from it, not of it, not thinking of what you want. You think from what you want. How would you feel if you actually were, you had it already, it's already done and everything else. So, so that's, I mean, a lot of you out there who listen to my videos, you're already aware through your own research and everything else that there's a lot of different paths um, that I'm explaining here that you already know. Like for instance, if you want to look at it from a, a slightly Christian charged point of view, then it would be, you would look into Neville Goddard because he did it, he did it, he explained it perfectly well. Um, the only trouble is that he explains it through through the Bible. No problem with that, but you know, it can get a bit wearing after a bit because obviously, you know, the, the place he's coming from, like Neville Goddard, the place he's coming from is that the, the Bible itself, the Christian Bible is just a book wrote about the states of human consciousness, you know, archetypes sort of thing. That's what it's wrote about, but people take things literal and they're just stupid and, you know, and they go off pushing ideas on other people and everything else. So um, that, that's where that one, a very touchy subject, um, Christianity, you know, um, any of the faiths actually. Um, also, remember that atheism is a faith. So if, you, if you're an atheist, then, then you're not going to be able to do this because you wouldn't believe in anything else, you know, outside of this anyway. So most, most hardcore scientists are atheists because they don't believe anything else. So, so they're shut off to it and that's fine. It's the way it's supposed to be. It's no problem. So, so yeah, if you go down that side of it, so, so that would be the Neville, Neville Goddard's way of explaining it is think from it. Think from it. What, how would you feel if you already had it? Take yourself into those emotions. Create those emotions really fully felt. You know, so you're electromagnetized. Uh, where you get the tingles in your brain and in, in the back of your neck and you feel like it's already, oh my God, it is. And sometimes you can cry as well with overwhelming, um, the, the feeling so overwhelming. Then you let it go. You don't even focus on how it's going to come about. You take the opportunities that come to you via synchronicities. And that's when you spot the synchronicities because you, you know what you're creating. You take those opportunities, but you detach any feeling towards, oh, that's the way they're going to happen. Because every time you pick a path, nature has to fulfill that path too. So every time you go, oh my God, that's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen through this person and then that person is going to do this and this is going to come to me. You've made it very complicated. So it's going to take years and these other people would have to be in a position then to give that to you and you know, you've, you've picked that path, you've complicated it. So you just think from it and then you detach. 
but you take up the opportunities that come along via synchronicities and you'll know when they come along because they'll make the hairs on the back of your head stand up. So you, you go along through that. Um, don't, don't attach, don't think this is the way it's going to happen because you're just complicating it. Like I said, you'll, you'll make it very hard work and long-winded. And, um, and you'll find that it will, be, it will come, nature will be able to have an infinite amount of choices to itself. And it will come through it via very strange ways and almost last minute like you would think that everything was falling apart and it's never going to work and then suddenly bang is there whatever you want it is there so um you know th this is this is another the so that, that would be um a neville goddard explanation now if you want to go down um how else can we explain it who else am i thinking of there's so many inspirational people at the moment. It's almost like it's a new wave. You can see what's going to happen here. All right, let's let's go down this one. There's always a matter... At the moment, you would never see the world so crazy. The world has gone absolutely bonkers. It's, it's now... I didn't really take much time on a date, but it's it's March, April... It's May now. So it's, so it's May in 2018. Um, and the world has gone absolutely bonkers completely thrown up in the air now those of you who know about creating your own reality and that will also see that there's a lot of people becoming aware of this there's there's been energetic changes that have happened and uh, oh by the way i was at a talk at the weekend and one of one of the t talks that stood out the most for me was thomas sheridan um now in his talk he talked about um the event of 9-11 in a way that nobody has ever talked about he says it was a stargate it was it was a it was almost like an energetically charging moment that that um that, that opened up a new porthole and since then nothing has ever been the same it's like the whole world's gone crazy there's all these things happening all over the world and you can think about it in many different ways and the way what, what thomas is saying for instance about about that particular event is that it wasn't any mastermind. There was no particular, it was nature. It was nature fulfilling its role. Um, you know, we got to quite a good stage in our, in our human consciousness, alignment of planets and everything else all combined at that time. That, um, you know, suddenly we, 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 we created that event and that event had to happen. Nature had to give us that event in order to shake everybody up and make everybody think in a different way. And you will notice that you know, you couldn't talk about something like this even five years ago. If I'd have, if I'd have even wrote some of the things I write now five years ago, I would have been absolutely hammered into the ground. I still do sometimes now. I probably will with this video. I've had all sorts of things said to me lately, you know. But, um, so, so yeah, so, so it's like a, uh, you know, Thomas says, it's a portal. It's opened up, um, you know, something completely new. It's changed. It's almost altered human consciousness. Everything's not what it seemed. The old paradigm had to be shattered. It is getting shattered. Anybody who, who watches mainstream media will see that they're falling to absolute bits in desperation. They're done. You know, when you when you create your own reality, you know that they've been you've been given a pathway for them to be done. So they're they're finished with. Um, anybody in positions of power have become so desperate now that they're that they're controlling freedom of speech and everything else. That that just shows a weakness. So that just shows that there's never been a time in human history and in, in recent human history where we've been such a threat just to speak like this just be able to share videos on youtube or something all these things are adding up you can see the whole world in it from a different light and um and it's getting to the point now where everybody's trying to create their own little section of reality and everybody else's intentions rubs off on you including you guys watching this video you know if I was to allow um, the, the emotional attachment to some of the comments that I get, some, some of them, even today, um, then, then I would, um, I, I would uh, completely lose it and probably not even be on this path that I'm on. But luckily enough for me, when you stand in your own personal truth and you speak your own personal truth, no one can strip it from you. So they can call you all the names under the sun and you'll still feel like you totally you know that that you 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 sort of got this knowledge should i say you got this knowledge and no one can take that away from you so it's a good place to be in your truth and that that's that's what you got to try and do all the time
also remember that um, you know when you're when you're creating your reality and you're trying to do all these things, keep it private. Don't tell anybody else if you're really unsure because you can kill it. Even someone you love, they 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 might they might say to you, "Oh, is that right?" And they'd be really interested. But then in their head, they might just have that feeling. Oh, he ain't gonna be able to do that. What's he on about? Or she? Ain't, what's she on about? She's never gonna be able to do that. And they've already put that charge. There's an element of doubt in you. That thought that they've had will find you, and it will get inside of you. So there's all these little things that you have to watch out for. But ultimately, if you stay faithful to it, and you always feel it to be true, and there's many other things you feel to be true in everyday life. This is what creates your reality. This is why you can't just go, oh, I want this, and that's all I want. You know, there's loads of other things that happen to you all at the same time because you're creating them all. Remember that you're, you are working against your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind sometimes. So your subconscious, I tell you the way to, it's easier to create when your conscious mind is working in tandem with your subconscious mind. And if you want to know when that is, that's when you get your gut feelings. So you can be driving along and you could suddenly go, oh my God, I'm gonna do so and so and so, and it's something completely wild. But you just know it, there's this gut feeling that comes up and it comes into your conscious mind. The two are working together and those things happen. And it's exactly the same with when you first meet someone and you get a gut feeling, something really bad about this person or whatever. You know, sometimes just be a little feeling and you can get over that, you can negotiate with that other person. And uh, maybe the, the things that you're unsettled about, you've altered in reality of yourself. But then there's those really big gut feelings and sometimes people ignore them. And then later on, how many times do we come back and say, we sort of listened to my gut feeling on that one. I felt really bad right from the moment go. And that was basically your, your, your subconscious connecting directly through with your conscious mind. It's the same in dreams. That's, that's what it is basically. Um, that's why some of your dreams become complete reality. And incidentally, you start getting visions when you're awake, you know, vivid dreaming or even, even actually being able to manipulate your dreams with your conscious mind. So all these things you, come, you become aware of that, that subconscious and how it's working and it gives you guides, it tells you where you're going. So, it's, so you, you need to have those two working in tandem, otherwise it's never gonna happen. So you've got to keep feeding those things constantly and eventually you, you will almost brainwash your subconscious. This is what TV is doing. It's brainwashing your subconscious, it's owning your thoughts, it's owning your reality, it's creating it for you. Um, on a mass scale, because we all know that, that a load of people feel in the same way, got more chance of creating a reality than, than just me on my own. So you're always fighting against everybody else as well, but you can also detach yourself from that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's all about um, just stay away. Everybody wants to own a piece of your reality. Everybody wants to get into your subconscious. A good way to get into your own subconscious, if you can't just do affirmations, say for instance, or you know, when you wake up or when you go to bed at night, try and have good thoughts when you go to bed or play an audio book that, that's really like philosophical, really speaks to you anyway while you're awake. And just fall asleep to it because it talks to your subconscious. What you'll find is you'll draw those people, whether it be Carl Jung um, or another recent one I had recently, uh, Jordan Peterson, um, you can call these people into your dreams via the audio books. It's a magical thing, even even YouTube. Just make sure you've got on airplane mode so you don't run up a massive bill from playing it through the night while you're asleep. But um, yeah, if, 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 you, if you play these things, what you'll find is you have dreams about these people and you actually speak to them. You are you and they are them and you walk through woods. I've walked through woods with Carl Jung. I've been through buildings with, with Jordan Peterson. And you teach them as much as they teach you. Remember that they're, a, lot of, a lot of the time as well, they're, they're drawn to you, as well as you being drawn to them. You've both got something to share. They might not be here, but their consciousness still is. Doesn't go, just can't be measured, that's all. So I, I think that's where, where I wanna finish this one, because I don't wanna make anything too long, but I'm gonna make some run-up ones. I, I, you know, it's getting dark here now, and. I've got to get back. So, um, you know, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. And let, let me know if you if, if you want any more, whether whether it be via commenting on Facebook or, um, or or commenting on YouTube. Just let me know how you feel about it and, um, you know, whether or not you'd like to hear any more because we're all in this to share 
stuff with each other. I'd love it to, you know, I love it when my friends do videos of all this sort of stuff because there's always a piece of information somewhere you never thought of and you go, that's it, I've got it. You know, they, they know it. I, I find it very inspirational. So, um, yeah, thank, thanks for listening anyway. Bye.